Hello viewers, I'm SB and welcome to Mask of the Rose, a dating sim from Fail Better Games, The Fallen London People. Um, I think, sort of a dating sim, F a visual novel. Visual novel is probably the, r the more correct thing to say. And then you can smooch some of the characters in it because that's how visual novels work, is my understanding. Oh, listen, I'm not wild about the genre broadly, generally. But I've played one or two that I actually really, really liked in the last year or so, and I absolutely love Fail Better's writing. Uh, Sunless Skies made me fall 100% head over heels in love with Fallen London. This game takes place in that setting, and they were kind enough to give me a key for free. So I figured, hey, why not? Why not bring you all this thing, alert you to the fact that it exists, and show off some of the whatever the heck it is they're doing in here. I, I guess we ought to go find out exactly what that is, huh? Your first foray into Mask of the Rose is unlikely to end as happily as you might hope. Never mind. Savor your successes. Delight in your disasters. Try again, wiser in the ways of the Neath, and then let the text just fade off the screen before you're done reading it. Whatever, that's fine. Here's the important part. In February 1862, with no warning at all, London fell through the surface of the Earth. That's why it's called Fallen London. They don't mean fallen in a sort of a metaphorical sense, although they do. They, they do definitely mean that. But also, they, literally, this happened. <clears throat> Obviously, it does mean the other thing. Uh, this was meant to be a year of progress and in industry. The Great Exposition, trams... A new sewer system? Instead, we find ourselves dwelling in a cave. It's October now. The fires have been put out. The bodies have been buried. But the future remains unimaginable. The time before, impossibly distant. So this is quite early in sort of like the timeline. Um, I believe... Sunless Skies takes place some considerable amount of time after these events. Uh, so, our past. Who were we? What is this button? Okay, that's just the pause button. Uh, so, a dock worker's child whose father works the docks unloading ships. Uh, the docks are allied with the working class and with criminals. That's not a terrible start. I do generally like to, to work uh, in these sorts of games on the lower end of the socioeconomic ladder. It's just sort of where I feel the most comfortable given, you know, my life. Uh, a child of the gentry. My family had an estate on the surface. My father was a magistrate. All that is unreachable now, of course. Um, landed gentry, hobnob in high society, and with the constabulary. I kind of can't, I don't know if I can stomach it, honestly. A tailor. Family kept a tailoring shop with aspirations. Dressed our customers better than we dressed ourselves. So some context with society, but, you know, you're thoroughly working class. I uh, may also have contacts among the artistically inclined. This is sort of interesting. Ooh, okay, we're not allowed all of the backgrounds on the first playthroughs. There's also a housebreaker's child, an undertaker, an arcane academic. Interesting. I'm. A, we're going to go tailor. I was a tailor. That's me. Down here, your name is whatever you say it is. Often, there's no one left to remember who you used to be. Some people hold tight to the names they carried before. Some reinvent themselves completely. Uh, I prefer strangers to address me as... Looks like we got a pretty standard set of, uh, of appellations here. A lot of this is a little, a little high, a little hoity-toity. Uh, in intendant is interesting. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll accept, we'll accept Mademoiselle, uh, though, my friends, of course. Well, listen, my name is Sowen. My friends can call me Winnie. Suits me just fine. That's me, Winnie to my friends, Mademoiselle to strangers. Uh, down here, I'm finally able to use the name that always fit me. And, you know, we'll just leave the, the precise meaning of that in the shadows where it belongs. 
choose the cameo that best represents you. Okay, who is Winnie? Who is our who is our our tailor? Um. I don't know. I don't want to be boring and just go for something that looks like how I look. That is a wicked earring. Yeah, good enough. In the Neath, a true ally means everything. When I find people to be close to, I am open to... Okay, so this is a thing I know is part of the pitch. It's a visual novel... A genre that is famous for being kind of romancy stories um, in which you do not have to be open to romance if you don't want to. You can play this game as someone who is entirely ace or entirely arrow or both um, or sort of degrees, you know, degrees between that and um, just uh, fully allo romantic or whatever. Um, I think I think we're going to be open to whatever comes our way on this playthrough here. I'll be looking for both romantic feelings and a physical connection, although maybe not necessarily terribly hard. I don't actually know what else you do in the game, so... A friendship and matchmaking are possible too, of course. You know, as a, as a tailor, I think it makes a lot of sense for our character to sort of have her eyes on other people's paper a lot. Like, a lot of the job is interpreting people's needs and satisfying them even beyond uh, people's wants and needs and satisfying them even beyond the statement of those wants and needs beyond that person's um, comprehension or admission of their wants and needs necessarily. So I think a matchmaker makes a lot of sense. I'm pretty happy with this. Let's go for it. But right now I'm meant to be helping with the census, finding out who still lives in my neighborhood. The first census results are due tomorrow. If I turn them in, I get paid. The first money to come my way in nearly two months. If I don't, well, I'm going to disappoint Grizz badly. She knew I was in trouble, so she went out of her way to find me work with her own employers. She even gave me a badge to show my affiliation. A badge of the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. The front of the badge almost looks like a constable's badge, with the lion and unicorn emblazoned on it. The back of the badge has some kind of symbol I don't recognize. Hot to the touch. Huh. In case you're not familiar, I guess it, it maybe is worth saying, uh, this setting is rife with the supernatural. There's going to be magic. There's going to be weird stuff. There will probably be undead. You know, it's, it's a good time. It's a fun place. I keep it with the clothes I have from before the fall and a few odd items I found more recently. Okay. What clothes do I have? So, it was noted in our background that, broadly, we dress our customers better than we dress ourselves. So probably not too fancy. Do we have... Nope. We has, we has no hats. Hatless we stay. Uh, nothing to wear on the face. So we have our badge, of course. We also have a fake but vibrant corsage. Uh, the most obvious thing about this flower is that it is extremely fake. Perfect for going out on the town, boasting and gallivanting. I think there's like, it, the fact that it's a flower that's extremely fake, I actually really like. I think it gives a certain, um, it's a bit of a, uh, what, do you, what do we want to call it? It's a bit of a double bluff, right? Like, you could imagine a person might wear something like this to pretend to be fancier or of higher standing than they really are. But if you wear one that's extremely fake, then you're allowing other people to see through that ruse so they think they've got your number when in fact you're wearing a thing that's fake because you want people to think that that's what you think of yourself i like that a lot i hope that was clear the way i explained it um yeah and the apron the apron speaks to a shopkeeper's life helpful cooperative with a gift for invention and a true appreciation of craft i like this quite a bit Hello. Ah, this is Grizz. Ah, I thought you were up here. Are you planning to do any census taking? I react to that the way I react to many things these days. Uh... Hmm. 
probably a lot of putting people at ease in this job, but maybe that's the old me? I dare to name the frightening things out there. Once you've plunged through the earth, what's the point in maintaining lies, right? It's the whole reason that we've revealed the true self in the first place. I'm not sure what I'll meet out there. Not everything outside is human. Rumors. Don't let a few odd things in the broadsheets frighten you. Come tomorrow evening. We need to have at least a few census forms filled out. Or I'm going to be the one explaining to Mr. Pages. Mm, okay, I know enough about the setting to be worried about that. <laughs> and if that happens, I'm not going to help you with your employment prospects again. Grizz works for the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting. It seems to agree with her. She wears trousers to work and comes home at all hours. It's very important to her being taken seriously by these employers. The next thing I do is characteristic two. I like this way of sort of filling in who you are. This is this is cool. Um, while I don't feel like jumping on her is the right answer here, uh, a bit of dark humor. You know, a bit of dark humor I think is good as a bridge between the old us and the new us. We're into sort of like facing up to the realities now more than we used to perhaps. But it's hard to completely shed that that sort of um, that old desire to to placate and to put everybody else first. And the flower situation is sort of indicative of that as well. I feel like dark humor is sort of a place where you can do both. Did your employers say whether I should also interview the squid faced men or are they not included in the census? I believe they were invented by the newspapers, but if you happen to meet with any, by all means, record their names. What about the talking crows? Consider yourself at liberty to include any creature capable of telling you its name or occupation. What do you think of the questions? They're written in the most peculiar spiked handwriting, and there are punctures in the paper in random spots. Um, I mean, right, right to it, right? Ask her what put the holes in the paper. But why does this page look like this? Do your employers know how to use a pen? Of course. Here, try the questions on me. Okay, she does not want to talk about that, and that's upsetting. Say you've just knocked on the door, and I've come to answer it. Yes, what do you want? Uh, <clears throat> I guess I ought to put on my badge. When I'm, when I'm behaving as an agent of the ministry directly, I should probably wear the badge, right? Grizz clearly wants to treat this as a realistic practice for future work. The badge identifies me as a census taker, an official representative of the ministry, although there will probably be people with whom, like, if we're trying to get information from them, we don't uh, necessarily want to be wearing a badge. Supposedly, it makes people more likely to answer my questions. To her at the very least, introduce myself as an agent of the ministry showing my badge. I don't know what to make of that symbol. Good evening. On behalf of the Ministry of Accounting and Recounting, I have a few questions. Oh, how lovely. I am so grateful these ministries are looking after us. Uh, are we flirty? We are, we are, I'm, I'm going to just play it straight. This is really important to her, right? She doesn't want us screwing around on this. I'm going to try to be, I'm going to try to be cool. Straightforwardly accept her performance. Well, this is not too hard. Go on then. What's the first question? How many people live in this establishment? Establi sorry, <clears throat> establishmentation. Is, is that a word? Establishmentation? My brain just edited it right out <laughs> the first time. My superiors are enthusiastic embellishers of the language. If you like, you can uh, translate into questions that are more likely to be understood. 
Right. How many people live in this establishment? Four. The landlady, Ms. Mrs. Horatia Chapman, a young man named Archibald Reed, myself, and a fourth character. Very disreputable. Um... Suggest that she might... See, this is sort of inside the bounds of the exercise and still teasing my friend, right? Yeah. Suggest that she might not be the picture of respectability herself. Oh, disreputable, is it? While you, of course, are very respectable. Conventional, even. If London had more sensible conventions, especially for female persons, I would be highly conventional. Uh, sometimes I'm in the mood to keep chatting, and sometimes I want to get to the point. Yeah, we're going to linger over the census in order to keep chatting here. My guess is that this is going to be a little bit of, like, world backstory stuff, and this is if you if you know already, but let's fill in. Is anyone in this establishment uh, enamorificated or impassionated? What does this even mean? And they're asking if anyone here is in love. Just, just ask that. Is anyone here in love? No. I don't know. What about Mrs. Chapman? I wouldn't assume that she's too old for such feelings. I hadn't considered that. Grace is always telling people not to make assumptions, though she hates to be caught making those assumptions herself. At this moment, a second visitor walks in. Archie is a medical student. He hadn't finished his training before the fall, but he has plenty of work now. Right after the fall, it was broken bones and cuts. Lately, there are fewer wounds and more diseases. I'm really enjoying the presentation of it so far. Hi, I wondered where you were. Uh, hey, Archie. Maybe you could knock before entering my room? I could have been doing anything here. You could have knocked. Oh, I'm sorry, Winnie, but something's happened. Out I went this morning to visit a patient, and what do I find pasted up on the wall? He holds up a broadsheet. There's a new decree from the Ministry of Cartography and Chi well, Chirography, probably, uh, that all maps and atlases are to be surrendered or put on the fire. Well, it's your folk making these rules, Grizz. Uh, that is curious, and also, like, highly worrying. Um... But maybe I stay out of this, because I don't... Our character probably feels like she understands their dynamic, but I sure as hell don't, and I kind of want to see it play out. I have no view. It's a strange thing to say out loud. Will you be asking your Mr. Pages about these maps? One must respect the law. None of us knows what is safe down here in the Neath. Most likely, there are reasons you can't imagine. Winnie, please do collect at least a few census forms by tomorrow from whatever Londoners you are able to find. At the end of the day, I'll find you and we can take them to Mr. Page's together. Okay, deliver a filled census form to Page's. Do you know what I miss the most? Back home, the sister's hair turned color when it rained, blonde to a wet, plastered brown. Like a mad hen, she looked. Um, you doing okay there, Archie? H how are you holding up? Uh, worse than Grizz, I won't lie. Seems there's no road out of here. Food from the masters is a wee reprieve, but when you think of all else that might kill us below... Uh, scurvy and the like. A great hulking rock fell on a house, a house in Southwark. Did the roof in, near to killed the whole household. Uh, but I'd best be quiet. I'd like to give you nightmares too, and I'm fair out of laudanum to help with the sleep. Yeah, um... 
Grizz has me gathering census pages for the ministry. Aye, Grizz told me it was some such thing. Uh... Show some doubt that she told him that? Simply ask about his romantic commitments. Seems sort of out of the blue, doesn't it? I'm gonna... Uh, I'm not gonna flirt with Archie. I don't, I don't think that that is where my heart lies. Although, again, I barely know the poor man. Uh, I'm gonna click show some doubt because I'm curious what it means. And also, you know, the, the rose with the, with the pin through it again. Are you truly free of romantic commitments from before the fall? You've never befriended an especially promising patient? That's a euphemism and a half. You must have had your share of opportunities. Down here, no, there's no one. Well, what about before Judgment Day? Well, there was a lass back home, and what did my mother do but promise me to her? Um, I'm not going to inter... It sounds like he's telling a story. I'm not going to interrupt. I see. That's not say nothing. I... Mm. The question has stirred recollections he's not considered for a time. <sighs> is it bad to say I've not thought much of her since? She has very even teeth. And my mother said overlapping teeth in a woman mean defiance, and gaps mean a light skirt. Ah... Uh... I'm not a big fan of your mom, dude. I'm going to offer the possibly unwelcome view on his mother. That's our thing. That's Winnie's new thing down here. We just, we, we're a straight shooter now. Maybe. Sometimes. When I can, when I can bear it. Uh, by the sounds of it, your mother is an interfering old crone. <laughs> he didn't love that. Uh, let's ask him about his work. threaten him for an answer? That doesn't feel necessary. Seed some of the power back to Archie. That's an interesting um, that's an interestingly bald understanding of the underlying conversational dynamic here. I don't feel like you usually see things like that as an option in a game. Um, I do feel like I've upset him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna maybe like step back a little. Let's throttle back. I know this might be a nosy question. Is your income all from seeing patients these days? Um, I did sell off a couple of my old atlases just today. The censored maps sell for a good price if you know the right buyer. Ferret's vermin eradication takes in more than just rats. Now that's interesting information. I'll, I'll be about my own things then. Okay, that was worth it. We kind of we dug something out of him there. I keep track of everything in my journal. What conversations I've had, the plans I've made, how I'm feeling about other people. Let's just review the day. Uh, so we have our goals, of course. Conduct interviews if there's time. Wait for Chris to take me to see Mr. Pages. It seems like I really need to make sure that there will be time. 259 days since the fall. Season of confessions. <laughs> uh, we have no pennies and a census page. We know a couple of people, Harjit Singh, the constable, the one to ask whenever I get lost or think I might be going to get lost. Uh, I first remember Harjit from the night of the fall when he was patrolling the neighborhood. Okay, so we're reckoning time entirely from the fall. That makes sense. Uh, and then there is Horatia Chapman. I still owe her back rent. Uh, day one twenty or day minus one twenty four pre fall. I moved into Horatius. She gave me a good room and a stern speech about conduct in her house. Uh, day zero mid apocalypse. We lived through the night of the fall in Horatius' basement. She's looked after all her lodgers since. Well, that's very caring of her. Uh, and then, yeah, okay. This is just all the text we've seen so far. Straightforward enough, I think. <laughs> Two hundred sixty days since the fall. Six days remain in the season of confessions. Okay. Uh, I do not know the fall in London calendar well enough to know what comes after or how many seasons there are or anything like that. The newspapers aren't what they used to be, but someone is still printing broadsheets these days. The headlines today read, Beware ailments caused by lack of sunlight. Cholera, scurvy, female distemper. 
that's probably not really okay it's fine let's not worry about it medical science in the 1850s even prior to the introduction of magic you know well we can take a second here to recall the past i suppose sure seems like they want us to i'm always reliving london's last night on the surface I try to put it out of my head, but it's still there. The dimming of the sun at three in the afternoon. The sky turning the color of rust. Boy, that's an unfortunate coincidence. Mm. The horrible bang and the cloud of dust from the direction of West Westminster. The tolling of the bells. The horseman who rode down the street, liveried in the garb of the palace, shouting, In Her Majesty's name, go indoors. And then the sky was full of bats. More bats than I thought could exist in the world. Wheeling, shrieking, defecating. People went indoors then, if they'd ignored the criers. And those that had no house crowded into the churches and under the bridges. Even now, I don't understand. Uh, even now, I don't understand. Actually, that's really interesting. I mean, they knew something was up, right? It doesn't necessarily mean she knew what, you know, the thing. But it is curious. I think that, like, th there's definitely, um, this is a little bit more poetic. There's, there's more, like, wonder in the dread of this one. Even now, I don't understand how Her Majesty knew to send criers. I think it makes sense to, to lean this way because I think our character is a person who is, you know, thinking about the behaviors of the people who are socioeconomically, quote unquote, above. Because uh, we know those are the ones that we have to we have to take care of to some degree in order to eat. Probably there's a lot of bristling at that fact. Um, the palace has been shuttered since that day. The royal family do not emerge. Surely, if they had known this was coming, they would have departed London. It was only it was the uh, it was only the city that fell. The rest of England, we assume, remains above. I wonder how far exactly. Oh, I reckon it's a tornado. I've heard of something similar in the Welsh hills back to 1760. A light in the sky and a noise like a thunderclap. I'm oh, sorry, that was Archie again still. Horatia appeared, but no, that was, that, mm, mm, mm. that's no tornado, love. It's a plague of Egypt. Uh, yeah, I maybe I maybe step in and try to keep the keep the mood as light as possible. Keep people from each other's throats. Because we can see the turn, right? That's the that's the kind of observancy uh, that we practice. And the newspapers will tell us in the morning what it was. Uh, at least, why it'll make a good story for the letters home. And Glasgow will be envious of our London fashions. And then the ground shook again. I believe we can blame Mr. Basilgate's excavations digging about under London, causing a seismic disturbance. And what did he find in there but a cave of three million bats? Is that what you reckon? Well, there are stranger things beneath London. I wonder if she knew. Because, <laughs> boy, ain't that the truth? That was the beginning of it, but we were down there for hours and hours. The sky darkened, and it didn't return to normal. Once, around midnight, Grizz went upstairs and opened the door to the street, but she came right back down again. She said the cobbles were galloping about. It wasn't safe to walk outside. And after that first bit, the memories collide and get confused. I have trouble keeping track of which came first and which came later, and whether I'm imagining something. I've spent a lot of days like this thinking back, trying to piece together the bits of the puzzle. As if I could realize something that would make sense of it all. I wonder, I wonder if that sort of, like, nagging urge to recollect 
is in fact digging at something that I've either like intentionally buried or something that has perhaps been buried on my behalf. Um, I don't know that I want to adjust her outfit. When I changed my... Okay, it did change our lapel pin permanently in our outfit, not just for the duration of that conversation. I mean, not permanently, but you know what I mean. It didn't change it back for us. Well, okay, what are we doing? Because if we're going out to do the census work, maybe we leave the, the pin on, right? Yeah, I suppose let's head down to Thrall Street. This is very charming, though. Yeah, let's get the census. Thrall Street is just outside my front door. Surely these are the same streets that were always here. I say, uncertainly. It's worth it to be mindful of how others will perceive me. What role I play, what I can and cannot say, is constrained by my clothes. This was true before the fall, but it's even truer now. Names, identities, and relationships have all become so unsteady and unreliable. And we are trying to project something here, right? Like, very consciously. Harjit admires duty, but does not always care for the ministry. It's hard to say what impression the badge makes on him. That said, I think I'm satisfied with this. The apron sort of lets the neighborhood know that I am, like, of, of the working people. I'm probably from here. And the badge, like, I think this, this gives a good view of, like, a neighbor conscripted rather than, like, an official agent, capital A. Yeah, let's do this. The streets outside Mrs. Chapman's are not easy. Thanks to my family history, I do know where to find the nearest market that specializes in clothing. Hogs Lane Market. Likely just a corruption of Hogs Lane, but I'd keep my pet pig on a leash all the same. But whenever I need to find more of them, it's Harjit who helps me. I have something for you, if you want it. He produces a nearly new admiral's hat in perfectly good condition. I found it near the docks. No sign of the owner, but I can't wear it myself. I thought someone at Mrs. Chapman's might get use out of it. Perhaps Lady Griselda? That little smile. Okay, an admiral's hat trimmed with gold braid. Makes a person look like a respectable representative of the Navy. Wearing it gives me a commanding, if slightly curmudgeonly, presence. I think, first of all, not my style, and secondly, somewhat counterproductive for the image that we're trying to project here. Clothes make an impression on other people when I wear them. They make an impression on me, too. Sometimes I'm inspired to say things I wouldn't otherwise. I like that system a lot. That's a fun design. I have the feeling this particular hat would make me a bit gruff and commanding, and it's hard to imagine wanting to be that way with this character at all. I do not have a choice but to put the hat on my head and consider what to say. Um, I'm going to take the hat off again immediately. I, I can just imagine our character uh, putting, putting this on and immediately going, oh no, that's awful. I have some sense of style, right? Now, I thank him. Thank you very much. He could have got a penny for two uh, for it. He could have got a penny or two for it by selling it on to a secondhand clothes merchant. Harjit is silent. Um, explain apologetically about the census, or be like, "Hey, listen, I'm." He doesn't love the ministry. So I think I'm going to be apologetic about it. Like, hey, sorry, buddy, but I need your help for a thing for those people you don't care for. <laughs> I am sorry for the interruption, but I've been sent to ask a few questions of the citizens of London, or those who survived, at any rate. I'm not sure uh, we are what the masters have in mind. But nonetheless, it would be a help. <sighs> I see. London was determined to collect everyone's name even before the fall. Um... I'm gonna ask whether his answers have changed. You know, some things about me have changed. I'm curious whether we could, like, uh... I, I wanna, like... I wanna make it clear that I am open to this possibility in others, too. 
Uh, would your answers be the same now as they were then? Not exactly. What do you wish to know? Um, I don't know that I'm good. He is a cop, right? Like, he seems nice enough. And don't get me wrong, he's cute and everything, but he's kind of a cop. Um, ask, making it clear this is for the census? No, I want to be a little bit more personal than that. I'll just ask about his household. Do you live alone? That one time I shared my lodgings. That was prior to the fall, but my former companion is missing. Oh. Um, we could just talk about the census then. That seems like a sore subject. Your character is, like, really eager to flirt with people. What, what should I put down about your romantic attachments? For the census, that is. This is not a matter I would explain to most people. You and I have known each other for some, or have known one another for some time, however. I think you'd hear me out kindly, but if you'd rather not carry my secrets. No, I fucking love secrets. Uh, the, I, I really like that they give you two, like, declines that are weighted in two different directions, but, like, for sure, I will keep your confidence. I love secrets. I believe I know what is expected in these situations. Well, even before the fall, I would not have married. My companion was not a lady. He was an officer who came to the Punjab. But we became acquainted, and then more than acquainted. I thought he and I would remain together throughout our lives. I followed him here, away from my own country and everything I knew, to the home of my former enemies. He promised me that it was worth the sacrifice. He said we would never be separated. Yeah, that's a promise that a person doesn't really have the power to make. You know, it's it's hope. It's a hope. There's hope in that voice. You will observe that he isn't here. I like the wry expression. Um, pungently condemn his former lover. Uh, yep, dark humor. This is how we roll. Oh, I see. I wait two beats. Then I tell the one about the cannibal baby. There is a short silence. There are so many things in my life that I share with no one. Things that are not secret or even private, but that are beyond companionship. The memory of my home, my faith, the intricate politics of the court and the whore, which I learned in childhood and cannot forget. Now I'm adding to, all, to those all the empty buildings that I alone see. Do you have any such things of your own? In which communication entirely fails? Um, I mean, okay, so... Gosh, how, how personable am I with, with this guy? Uh, maybe we're, like, really close, actually. I'm, again, I'm, like, a little hesitant because he's a cop and I don't... But he's not... He doesn't work for the ministry, so... I think that would be where it would be, like, a little bit more dangerous to let too much information out. Still, he's a member of a group of... A th like, he's a member of something that represents some kind of authority. And I think we are maybe a little skittish about that. Uh, I'm going to deflect that jokingly. Well, if I did, I could hardly tell you about them, could I? Perhaps so. Um... So, like, I want other people's information. I want to be a little bit more guarded with my own. Let's ask what he thinks of London. If you've seen other cities, what do you think of ours? Uh, it has been taken by surprise, which serves it right. No, you deserve a better answer. I do not like the city London was, and I do not like the city London will become. In time, she'll remember her confidence and try to rule again unless Lady Griselda and her type fail. But the cracked and lost parts of London now, this is a place to love. People have no choice but to meet as equals now and then. Okay, that's... I'm, I'm getting to like him a little bit more. 
Um, silently realize what relationship I want with Harjit. I'm hoping that this would be followed by another choice, because otherwise I don't exactly know uh, what that relationship is. But maybe, maybe I can trust him a little bit more than I was just thinking. I'm gonna take a darkly sympathetic view of matters. I'm not. I'm gonna show him that he and I have kind of the same view of the place. Let the let the friendship bloom in a more natural way. Well, perhaps you'll be in luck, and London will never recover. Uh, the East India Company may be gone, but the masters are in the bazaar, and the queen in her palace. London will remember what she was. Uh, I should go. Would you know where to find me? Always here. All right, there's time to run one more errand today before supper. So this is a thing I saw in the Steam store page reviews a little bit. Um, you get to do like two things a day and the game is not very many days long. So you really have to prioritize. And apparently this really does not sit well with a lot of people who feel that the proper way for one of these games to un uh, unfold is that time should never be an issue and you should always be able to do anything you want to do at whatever speed you want to do it. I don't necessarily think that's a reasonable expectation. Um, but we're not going to spend too much time on that sort of stuff. Let's head down to the market. We probably get some more census forms out there. I don't think it makes sense to look into goods for sale because I don't have any money. I could sell this hat, I suppose. But let's, um, let's look for census-filling shoppers. Let's see if we can do well by Griselda, because she seems to uh, care about this a great deal. It's hard to guess what outfit will, go will best go over in this environment. I'm going to stick with the vibe here. It's a little weird, but I, I, I like looking a little out of place in this particular way. Oh, uh, you're looking well. The badge makes clear that I'm here for business, not for conversation. So... Um, am I apologetic with this person? I know I've, I've been doing a lot of backing down so far, but I feel like... I feel like I gotta, I gotta like, play the agent here, right? Take the, take the job somewhat seriously. Explain that I'm working for the Ministry on the Census. The Ministry of Accounting and Recounting have asked me to work on the census. The lady, the lady looks faintly mutinous. Um, I'm just gonna ask her full name. We're gonna be sort of well. No, I'm I'm gonna stick to stick to the thing I just said. Let's be officious at least a little bit. I think she's gonna resist, but I'm curious to see that happen. What should I put on the census as your full name? It's Phoebe Riley, Irish, as you might guess. The Phoebe was my father's idea, so I'm told. He was a schoolmaster on his better days. Uh, I guess I'm gonna ask. She, I wonder, like, she's gonna regard this as a as an official question. I'm still gonna ask. How did you come to be here then? Uh, the same way as most of us that left in the bad times. Took a ship to Liverpool first, did what work I could get there. And then, when I'd saved up and learned a little, came to London to look for a better fortune. Okay, simply ask about the household arrangements. And what sort of household are you in? Uh, for a few years now, I've been a maid in the household of David Landau and his sister Rachel. Before the fall, there were more of us working there, as you might expect. Uh, but with things as they are, I'm having to do more of the work. It's not a house meant for one servant, I can tell you that. Uh, boy, we get the opportunity to condemn people pungently quite a lot. I mean, I like her so far. I'm gonna, I'm gonna laugh along. She's, she's being, she's being a little witty. I'm gonna show her that I appreciate it. I laugh darkly. I've put up notices for a new girl, but it's no use doubt anyone's there to read them. Um... Do I use the next question as a chance to flirt? I'm kind of like... I'm kind of curious. It's maybe a little early. <laughs> we really don't know anything about her. 
but already I do like her. You know what? I want to flirt a little bit. Just a little bit. Tell me you're not married, Phoebe. My heart couldn't bear it. Oh, there's someone I care for. I had a hope something would come of it after the fall. But it seems that's not to be by the look of things now. Um... Maybe, you know, that, that feels like a gentle statement of a boundary to me. I do not presume to comment. I say nothing, this time for real. No one speaks for a moment. Um, so, I mean, but she said it looks like it's not going to happen. Like, is that, is that, like, fishing or is that a boundary? I'm so bad with people. Um, I'm going to finish the conversation. If she wants something to happen, I'll let her take the next step. Goodbye. Very awkward. <laughs> I, I should take myself off. Horatio will be setting out the food now. Yeah, I totally blew that conversation up. Very awkward. Feels very true to life. Um, let's change clothes before dinner. I don't need to wear my apron. And probably I don't need to wear, you know, with them, I don't wear the corsage either. Because with these people, I'm not faking anything. I am allowed to wear my Admiral's hat. I will not do that. This'll do. The truest me, the simplest me at this table, if nowhere else. Grizz is waiting for me. Whatever census forms you have ready, it's time to take them to Mr. Pages. Um, should we have supper first? Now I'm famished. Mr. Pages has been expecting these all day. He's eager to see what you've made of the collection. Once I've shown you how to reach the ministry, you can come back on your own and turn in others. Grizz has me gather my papers. With luck, Mr. Pages will decide to keep you on. And with that, she leads me outside and down a side street that is no longer named. The way to the bazaar is much longer than a straight line. First left, then right, then back again and again. Like trimming an evening gown... It's going to uh, it's going to a bother for the bother's own sake. I wonder if that line of dialogue is not there for characters who are not tailors. Because how many people know what trimming an evening gown is like, right? I do not ask Grizz whether the masters require us to approach this way, or whether it is her own virtuosic embellishment. Maybe it's just a little something she's learning from them. Finally, we find ourselves standing in its shadow under its walls. Before us is a low door that once, I think, belonged to a solicitor's office. Grizz takes out a key, made of something other than metal, and unlocks that door. Curious, certainly. Mind the pile of papers. I've already sorted them three times. Mr. Pages is very particular about the ordering of documents. Now, where has he gone? Usually he's here by this time of day. Ah, yeah, that'll be him. Ah, th there you are, sir. We were just coming to bring you the census documents. A uh, first installment of many, I'm sure. There's a tone in her voice, uh, somewhere between fondness and a nanny guiding an untutored child. Um, I will pretend not to notice the mood between them, but I'm only pretending. Mr. Pages, may I present Winnie? Winnie, this is Mr. Pages. The whole Ministry of Accounting and Recounting is under Mr. Pages' direction. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm gonna express gratitude. Right, we need. We we need to keep this job. Thank you very much for offering me employment. The opportunities in London aren't what they used to be. Grizz assures us that they are improvificated. It is highly gratificatory that the populace of London appreciates their move. Ah. Uh, can I resist? 
I, you know, first of all, I kind of can't. And secondly, I think this is actually a really good low stakes moment to sort of test him. See if he's the kind of person who will snap at us for something like this. Does it make any difference what the pop populace of London think? Not at all. What have you brought us? Yeah, um, I'm gonna hand him everything at once. It turns over a page. It hand it turn everything at once. That's very fair, actually. Ah, most satisfactory. There are secrets here. It gives me two shiny pennies for my trouble. I turn one over and it has a portrait on the back of someone who is certainly not the queen. The face on the back of the coin stares at me until the hair prickles on my neck. The coin reminds me of a debt owed. And I don't want to remember. And my breath hitches and slows and resumes. I'm holding two pennies now. Okay. Am I getting two pennies per form? Okay, provide pages with seven census forms. It turns over a page. Yeah, okay, two pennies per page. Nice. I, yeah, what am I talking about? I say nice like, yeah, that's a lot of money. I don't know how much this stuff is worth. Pages offers me two pennies from a jar, bringing my stash to four. There are other coins in there, and a few things that aren't even coins. Buttons, pearls, probably false. A horse head carved from ivory or bone. The quality of your information impresses us this time. It turns over a page. Mr. Pages takes the census page eagerly and spends some time scanning it. Whatever it finds, it considers impressive enough to offer us two pennies. But it is, I think, disappointed all the same. There is something it is looking for that it cannot find. The business of the census is done for now. Perhaps I've earned a question. But before that, I think it's interesting to note the thing that just happened there. I kind of wish I had given it the pages in a particular order. Because I would love to know if the first page it saw was Harjit's, you know? Because we only got publicly available information from Griselda and, um, and Phoebe. But Harjit told us something that nobody else knows. Or at least, you know, not very many people. It seemed like nobody. I don't know if I wrote that down. I would hope I didn't write it down, but maybe I don't have to. Maybe the fact that I knew it when I was filling out the form is enough. I know that sounds crazy if you're not familiar with, with um, Fallen London, but I think it's entirely possible. Um... Yeah, these are both, I think, really interesting questions. I think we have a sense of what the romance accounts are about, probably, is that he seem, or it seems to be looking for information that that is not necessarily public or just more information. I'm actually really curious about the maps, and I don't expect to be told. I expect to be barked at for even asking, but I kind of want to see the magnitude of the barking. Why aren't we allowed to have maps and atlases anymore? We need them more than ever. London isn't arranged where it used to be. Ah, I believe the Ministry intends to resurvey the territory. In the meantime, it wouldn't do, you know, to have people using fallacious maps. The territory of the Neath is anti-dispossificated <clears throat> anti towards lying still. What? I, I beg your pardon? I... I suppose it must be a reference to the seismic activity. Perhaps there's a concern that further events will disturb the arrangement of London's streets. And, now that I think on it, in those circumstances the existence of inaccurate maps might cause alarm. Perhaps better not to create in the population an expectation of consistent layout. So she's absolutely filling for him, right? She, she is jumping in there and sort of like taking the question 
um, and, and trying to placate me. And that's very curious. Maybe I don't trust Griselda all that much. And that is enough of my official duties for the moment. Yeah. Grizz accompanies, out, uh, accompanies me out again when it is time to go. She makes a couple of remarks about how useful this will be, though she stops short of asking whether I'm in debt to Horatia. I haven't forgotten, though. Uh, pay Horatia half my back rent. Do we know how much that is? As we make our way back to Horatia's, Grizz asks me what I think of Mr. Page's. She tries to make it sound like an idly curious question. Yeah, at this point, I'm thinking she is an agent in the capital A sense in a way that makes me a little nervous. So I'm going to just tell her that everything's everything's all right. I think Mr. Pages is a great boss. I have no questions or distrusts whatsoever, as far as you know. I'm grateful for the arrangement. It was very good of you to put this together. Grizz looks too distrusting for friendly gestures. Before we go back inside the house, she reminds me. We have many more people in the neighborhood to survey for the census. You know how it's done now, so you can collect them and take them to Mr. Page's yourself. I have other duties, and I may not always be there. But Page's is... Well, I'm certain you won't be harmed if you visit the Ministry on your own. Oh, oh good. Uh, decide and confess that I have a flirtatious interest in Mr. Page's? No, I don't think I'm quite there. Um, I'm going to gently joke that her reassurance is not completely completely reassuring instead of accepting that straightforward, but I, th I think it was meant in a straightforward way. You know, no one ever says, this kitten won't harm you. It's only dangerous things that we're told are safe. There's a difference between things that can't do harm and those that won't. The latter are the more truly trustworthy. Okay, I agree with that. Archie finds me upstairs after dinner. I cannot stop thinking on the Ministry of Cartography. There's something not right there. If you'd let me show you what I'm thinking of... Yeah, go ahead. Please, be my guest. Uh, you'll see what I have in mind in a moment. It's a way of sorting out my thoughts. When I started, it was to think through a treatment. But it's good for all sorts. Stories, schemes, things that might be true or things that don't have to be. While he's talking, he's getting out some bits of paper written over in his own handwriting. And we watch closely. Welcome to Story Crafting. From time to time, you'll be making stories about things you discover in the Neath. Sometimes other people will ask you to bring them a story. They might want a true account or they might want fiction. Either way, you'll come here to create the story they want. Oh, this is very interesting. This is a slot. slot. Slots contain the elements of your story. This is a who slot, meaning it can contain a character featured in the story. Select the slot to continue. These are all the character tokens you could currently put in this slot. As you meet more characters, you'll gain more options. Select one of the tokens to fill the slot and continue, and it seems like they want me to pick Archie. This is a story about Archie. You can select the slot again to choose someone else if you'd like, otherwise let's continue. No, no, let's go. Characters in the stories you craft can be driven, driven by motives, and these motives spur them to act. Tokens for actions and motives are represented by fragments of text rather than pictures. Alright, let's see. Archie. I'm just telling a story, any story, huh? Well, Archie had unknown purpose. Wait, what did that, what did the text say here? This is a story about Archie, a medical student driven by secret unknown motives. He, uh, a student driven by secret unknown motives engaged those around him in nefarious schemes. 
Well done, delicious friend. Thank you. Menu, that's a very normal way to address me. Let's continue. Not every story is a single-hander, of course. Commonly, a second character will feature as a friend, an enemy, or a victim. Select this new slot to continue. The second person in your story needs to be different from the first. Note that the token, yeah, it's already crossed out. If you assign that token to this slot, it'll vacate the first slot. You can try that now. You may continue when both slots are filled. Am I allowed to? Okay, whoever is selected gets the glow. I'm gonna say that Mr. Page is here. Uh, sometimes two tokens can't be placed together because they don't make sense together. But more often, you can mix and match based on whatever you've learned about the world. You'll discover more variations in the, corpse, uh, the course of play. Archie, a medical student driven by secret unknown motives, engaged his lackey and factotum, Mr. Pages, in nefarious schemes. Mr. Pages was afraid of Archie. Sometimes she'll be asked for a story where certain elements can't be changed. In that case, those slots will be locked. You can change everything else about the story, but not that piece. Finally, sometimes you can put an unknown into a slot. That means you think there's another possible answer, but you need to explore the world to find out more. Uh, explore the world more to find out what it is. Building a story with some unknown elements gives you a hypothesis you can ask other characters about. Interesting. Uh. Okay, so we've got some unknowns here. New ministerial expose crafted. Question of fear. You formed a theory to ask people about. When you get a message about a story completed, that lets you know what kind of story you built. You can now go and ask other characters about your idea. Interesting. Whenever you're done working on a story, finished or not, you can leave the story crafting board and go and tell other characters about your idea. Hmm. So this is about somebody's lackey and agent. I want to mess with this more. Because I do have a I do have a thought about that story. Now uh, you see how I'm coming at it. I'm trying to work out what Mr. Pages is about with the ministry. And that's no use asking Grizz. You've seen that. Yeah. So yeah, this is what I was gonna set up. So develop Archie's theory of what Mr. Pages is up to. Yeah. Mr. Pages knew Neath changed, made laws forbidding mapping because it knew that the floor of the Neath would shift anyhow. The maps would become obsolete and the citizens grow frightened. It was better to allow people to think their own memories were at fault. I don't know if I believe this, like... But the typical Londoner protected London? Uh... What does protected London do here? Was determined to preserve London. I think most people are probably scared more than anything. More than having any particular defensive urge. The typical Londoner credulously believed its propaganda, even when it warned against using quite common street names. The typical Londoner gullibly fell into line with everything that was required, and never questioned whether Mr. Pages had some secret agenda. I don't know if I feel like that's true or not. We haven't, we haven't really met, like, very many people who know what's up yet. I don't have to... I don't care to have things hidden from me for my own good. I'd rather know the truth of it, and make up my mind what to do next. Not to mention that we need to learn the science of the Neath if we have any hope of doctoring down here. If you don't mind giving Mr. Pages all manner of stories about the people that live below, then you can go on with it. But if you'd rather another way to make in your bread... I have a friend below that can take what we learn and put it, put it about in the papers. I told them I knew someone that might be able to bring back a few secrets of the Ministry. If you make up the questions you want to ask, you can investigate with anyone who might answer. Earn your pennies helping the citizens rather than those creatures in their blankets. Yeah, that is a little bit... That's pretty compelling. Okay, yeah. Do I want to promise him I'm, I'm on board? I, it would be nice to have 
an ally who understands me as an ally, but I guess I'm assuming that he's going to trust me. And who knows? Yeah, you know what? I'm making a pact. We're in. Grizz scared me a very small amount, and so I've completely changed allegiances. Ah, uh, it sounds like it doesn't require upright penmanship. That makes it superior to census work right there. Uh, don't it just... And the truth has its own value. I'm glad to hear you say so. It's no easy thing fighting the doubts on my own. With Horatia telling me I have the fidgets and Grizz saying I should be quiet and trust our robe-wearing masters. I should let you get your sleep. If I'd met the like of you in Scotland, I would never have come to London. Uh, he's getting a little... Buddy, the thought hits me, but I don't show it. Yeah, I'm just going to try to keep him at arm's length as gently as possible. Um, I don't think we need to review the day. I think we, we know what happened there. Let's just head to, head to sleep here. Okay, story crafting ideas discovered. Action sold. Con contraband. Circumstance pre-falls. We got a lot of pieces. New pieces that we can use. So, like, when we meet a person, they won't be available for story crafting until the next day. Until our minds had a chance to sort of, like, work with it. Interesting. And welcome to day 261. Five days remain in the season. Another morning, another newspaper. Archie bought one, and the headlines read... Population of rats and spiders in London said to have tripled overnight. Well, one of those things is pretty cool. Big, I'm a big fan of rats. All right. I think this right here is where we're going to call it for today. Uh, my plan is for this to go between episodes of Monaco. Uh, so probably two to three episodes of this per week. It's going to be a little, a little intermittent, a little unpredictable, and I do apologize for that. Um, but, of course, there's also lots of other stuff running on the channel. Feel free to come back and check all that out. And when you come back to the Neath next time, we're gonna maybe start working out some theories about what exactly it is old Mr. Pages is up to, what Griselda is doing and thinks is happening, and also what exactly we're gonna do with all this money, because, like, we're borderline rich here, right? Gotta spend it somehow. Come back next time for that, and we'll see you then.